rep five hits and I'm like, okay, you're still moving this. We're gonna do more than that. And you know, once I get to seven, it's kind of like, I, I kind of like attribute it to like, if, if you've ever like been a kid, like holding your breath, seeing how long you can hold your breath when it just gets like so painful that your like lungs are like burning and you feel like you're gonna pass out and that kind of thing. Once I hit like seven, it was kind of one of those things. It's like, okay, there's no way in God's gentle green earth you're not hitting 10, you're either gonna hit it or you know, you're gonna fail and Ben and Luke are gonna lift this off of you. You get to a point where it's like, I don't know if this is gonna come up or not, but you know, it's, I'm gonna find a way to make it happen, you know, or it's gonna bury me. Today's my quad focus leg day and we are uh, inside of 15 weeks out from the Olympia, so it's a, uh, it's a serious one. Um, you know, probably gonna, not probably going to start with standing calves, move on to uh, abductors, adductors, do some leg extensions for some blood and some, uh, you know, just awareness in the quads and then go to a heel elevated safety squat and go from there. Um, Ben's a huge safety squatter. He's super, super strong at safety squatting, so excited to have him here today. That'll be a good push to have. And then, you know, Luke's strong and shit too, so probably you'll have some people to chase today, which is how I like it. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm three weeks. Um, so, like I said, I am literally trying to keep up with these boys because they're going full pace. Um, I do like squatting, so uh, I hope I don't embarrass myself too much because. Uh, it's a pretty cool environment. I've not actually squatted here before, so um, I'm going to try and get down here a lot more often and, and get some good leg sessions in. But this is a trial by fire. Hunter's on a mission. So, yeah, just try and keep up and have some fun with it. So I can look back and know that every single day of the 120 some odd days of prep, I couldn't have done anything more. I just want to win all 120 something days and I have so far, so today's no different. About to, uh, about to punch today's ticket, and then we'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, so uh, yesterday was leg day. It's definitely the hardest leg day of the Olympia prep so far. Um, definitely one of the hardest leg days I've had since Tampa, for sure. Um, as far as poundage is handled, I've had some very intense ones since Tampa, but yesterday was the first day that I really had gotten back to, uh, you know, real training poundages, like really pushing, pushing, pushing the logbook, per se, if you will. So, uh, we'll get to the working sets, but, you know, like, typical leg day fashion started with calves. Um, you know, I've gotten to the point with calves where I really like to, uh, you know, just work up, get them nice and warm, and you know, much like I train everything else, work up to a really hard straight set of, you know, like 10 to 12 reps of like perfect, really hard uh, contractions, and then call it a set there. No intensity techniques of any kind, recover, and then the next set, the back off set per se, isn't a back off set, it's just like a set from hell. It's the same weight that you did for the straight set, so, you know, find a way to get it like 10 times again. And then we'll do a drop, and then, you know, as many as you can, then a drop, so three drops. And then, um, you know, every single one of those drops, like really to true complete failure. You know, if you get to the point where you're only getting like five or six reps on one of the drops, you know, step out of it, take 10 breaths, get back in it, go. You know, there's no real rules for the set per se, except, you know, you want to hit the three drops and you want to get at least 30 reps with it. But uh, yeah, basically the point is just, just to put as much blood and as much lactic acid and create as much output as possible in that second set. So. Um, you know, after that, um, we were going back and forth with the seated just because I had three in the group. It was me, uh, Luke, and Ben. So just to keep the, uh, the, the intensity up, we were doing the seated supersetted with it. Normally I won't do that. But, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, 
if it was any indication, you know, Luke and Ben aren't very used to training calves like that, and they're pretty jacked up from it. So from there, we went to uh, the prime leg extension. Um, we did that just for some, some reps and some blood, uh, warm the knees up, get some blood in our quads. I don't really like going, you know, like crazy balls out with leg extensions or hamstring curls before my compound motions like a lot of people do because I find that if I have you know, one or both of my parts of my leg, like hypersaturated with blood, like you get from those higher up sets on the leg extension and the leg curl, it really throws off my squat mechanics. So I'd much rather do it, you know, after. And, you know, I get people saying like, oh, well, you can pre-exhaust. Well, you know, I'm not trying to pre-exhaust. I'm trying to, you know, get as much output as possible on those compound exercises the first time and then finish the leg off with the isolation exercises after. So. Differencing in opinions, obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat, I just think my way is the best, so that's the way I do it. <laughs> there's a reason my legs touch all the way down to my knees almost in all my front shots, and that is I have very well developed adductors. So that's a combo of this isolation work every single leg day, and then years and years and years and years of squatting and stuff. So if you're looking to make your legs look bigger, I feel like people focus so much on adding sweet and you know, sweep is much more of a genetic thing than a tissue thing. You can make your legs bigger, but if your quad doesn't have that shape to it, it's not gonna make it more sweepy magically. But you add a couple inches to your adductors, it's gonna make your legs appear wider. So something to keep in mind if you're trying to make your legs look bigger. From there, moved on to what would normally be yeses and nos, abductor and adductor. Uh, the uh, abductor machine here doesn't get heavy enough to really be useful for me and I don't have my cool little plate extender with me so we forewent doing uh, ad abductors which is ab but that's how I remember. For all of you out there pro tip that can't keep your AD adductors and AB abductors straight abductor the AB one is the one that your butt is so AB B for butt there you go and then adductors in there. It took me the longest time to uh, keep them straight that's how I keep them straight so anyways couldn't do abductors so for adductors we just worked up to a hard uh, straight set and then a back off set um, and you'll watch the footage you know I'm not trying to be goofy about it but you know it, it looks like I have my pain face on for a reason it really hurts to take those sets to true failure you know under a load that'll make you fail between 8 and 12 reps and uh, you know I kind of talked about it while I was on the machine but Whenever you have really filled in adductors, your legs appear wider. So many people focus on their sweep when they're trying to bring their legs up and ignore the fact that, you know, there's like a, they have a thigh gap all the way up to, up to their crotch. You know, if you look in my front shots, my legs literally touch all the way down to like maybe three or four inches above my knee because my adductors and inner thighs so developed. So it gives the illusion of my legs being a lot bigger than they already are. Granted, I know they're big, but it gives the illusion of them being even bigger because my adductors being developed like they are. So that's something I always really push on people who are trying to bring their legs up is to not ignore the, uh, the adductor and uh, solely focus on sweep because honestly sweep's more of a function of your uh, your genetics and who your mom and dad were than how you train your quads. Let's go, Olivia. So, um, from doing uh, adductors, we moved on to heel elevated safety squats. Um, that's honestly a bread and butter movement for me. Um, it's been a bread and butter movement for a very long time now. Um, I'll go down the reasons why. So, uh, my shoulders, I lack the mobility to get under a bar right now, like a traditional back squat. Um, a traditional back squat also places a lot more emphasis on the whole leg and especially like me who squatted low bar when I did squat with bar across my back, a lot more on my glutes and hams uh, than my quads and I split the emphasis on my leg days so on the quad focus leg day I'm doing everything I can to bias my quad. You know, so uh, obviously enter the heel elevation and the safety squat bar. The safety squat bar 
is cambered in a way that it puts the weight in front of you much like a front squat does, just minus the part where it's trying to strangle the life out of you. So that's why I like the safety squat bar. And then you add in that heel elevation and that's a double fold thing. You know, A, uh, for people like me who have poor ankle flexion, it allows uh, you to get into a full range of motion and truly drive from the heel and achieve the uh, level of knee flexion you want. And for people who aren't limited by their uh, ankle flexion, it's actually a great tool to increase the amount of knee flexion because, like I said, I'm training my quad and so I've really made a uh, jump to thinking about training everything from an anatomical standpoint. So the function of your quad is knee flexion to straighten out your leg. No, it's a knee extension, sorry, knee extension. So the more knee flexion, i.e. the more bend we put in the knee, the more angle we put in the knee, the more greater range of motion it has to extend it. So it's, it's more tension for your quad. Uh, so that's my thought process behind all my uh, exercise selections for quads and why I like the safety squat uh, with the heel elevated so much. From there, we moved on to another, you know, bread and butter movement for me. And I say this, you know, um, side note, in the past year and a half, I'd say 90% 90, 90 of my workouts have been the same exact workouts. They've been the same exact order with the same exact exercises, with the same exact rep ranges, with the only thing that is changing is the fact that I am, I am literally like trying, like someone has a gun to my head every single time I train to push either the weight on the bar or the amount of reps I perform. The workouts have stayed the same. Muscle confusion is bullshit. Like progressive overload is, is how you grow, plain and simple, you know. So um, next up was hack squats. I've been hack squatting pretty much every single leg day for the last two years. So um, that being said, this is a new hack squat that I'm not used to. Um, so I don't really have a basis to go off of, but. Uh, you know, I normally do reverse band arsenal hack squats using two of the uh, Intrad Orange Elite FTS bands. Um, here we did it with one, you know, Intrad band, but it was an off brand and it looked like it had been on there for years and not very uh, elastic. So definitely a lot less band help out of the hole than I'm used to. And uh, the most I've ever done templates for on the arsenal hacks for 12 reps, and we did templates for 10. Uh, with the lighter band on this hack. So I have no clue. Uh, moral of the story is it was a heavy ass set uh, for hacks. I definitely left a little piece of my soul in the hack squat for that set. Go, going through, the, the, doing those top sets on, on compound exercises like a hack or a deadlift or a, a squat or something, you know, those compound exercises that are, you know, like, honestly, once you get to a certain level, like scary poundages, it's, uh, it's an interesting, you know, like thought process that goes on during the set for sure. You know, it's one of those things like that hack squat set, for example, like the first rep, like it was like one of those holy shit, that was heavy kind of things. And then, you know, it's like, okay, gather yourself. Come on, it's time, time to bear down. And then, you know, we do two and I'm like, okay, this is really fucking heavy, but you know, we're, we're gonna get a set of like five or six in with it for sure. Like, don't you dare stop moving it until you get to there. And then, you know, you like rep five hits and I'm like, okay, you're still moving this. We're gonna do more than that. And you know, once I get to seven, it's kind of like, I, I kind of like attribute it to like, if, if you've ever like been a kid like holding your breath, seeing how long you can hold your breath when it just gets like so painful that your like lungs are like burning and you feel like you're gonna pass out and that kind of thing. Once I hit like seven, it was kind of one of those things. It's like, okay, there's no way in God's gentle green earth you're not hitting 10. You're either gonna hit it or, you know, you're gonna fail and Ben and Luke are gonna lift this off of you. You know, and it's just one of those things you kind of like hold your breath per se through the pain of the set and, uh, you know, just make it happen. and. Uh, 
that's that's pretty much every top set on any big compound motion. You know, it's uh, even on the good days. You know, it's you might not have like that initial like holy shit, this is heavy. But you know, you get to a point where it's like I don't know if this is gonna come up or not. But you know, it's, I'm gonna find a way to make it happen. You know, or it's gonna bury me. <laughs> so. Come on. That feeling, honestly, is what I live for. You know, it's it's uh, it's 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 like a drug, honestly, and it's and it's legal and it's free therapy. Lucky me, right? But uh, no, that's that's what I that's what I love about bodybuilding is those top heavy compound sets. You know, really pushing the envelope. Um, I'm getting a little emotional talking about it, honestly, right now. But uh, you know, just the fact that you know, no matter what's going on outside of the gym. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's, you know, 45 pounds is always 45 fucking pounds. And, you know, you know, so it's nice to be able to walk into somewhere and it just be you versus something that you have done before. And it's simply, are you going to be better than you were last time or not? And, you know, that's, that's a feeling that I have grown to live for, you know, like being able to really push the envelope and, you know, like look myself in the mirror at the end of the day and like, yeah, you were better than you were last time. Olympian belt, so some people know Luke and I used to own Brutal Muscle. And this is one of the belts that we have made by Cardillo. So, so far, six time Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates, Milos, the Mayan Sankev, and Luke Sando. So, I'm gonna collect as many Olympians as I can on this belt. While I'm here, the weapon. And you know, it's one of those things that's the sole driver too, because I'm not going to sit here and say every single time that happens. You know, I, I don't push my logbook all the time, every single workout. I do most of the time. But you know, on the days that I don't, you know, it's 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 hard to look at myself sometimes about it. And you know, it's definitely a it's a very negative, but it's a much stronger driver than than you know the positive. You know, it's like I don't want to I don't want to feel this again. And you know, so that's uh, it's good. It, it, like I said, it's a feeling that I live for for sure. But uh, I digress. So we hit that set on hack squats and. Uh, you know, from there, um, honestly, pretty thrashed. You could have shut the leg workout down there, and it would have been a good one. But you know, legs with the boys, we're gonna we're gonna push it. So, from there, we went on to uh, banded kettlebell split squats, and uh, you know, it's a really nasty exercise. And you can kind of see from how we all look in the footage. You know, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a test, and it's one of those things. That it's a test in the fact that you take it so far, painful, and then you still have the other leg to do. You know, it's not like you're done after you get done with one leg. Um, but those, if y'all try them, just because you'll hear me cue Luke on it a little bit, but what you really want to do is think about keeping your hips forward and your chest big and that kettlebell like resting on the leg that's up and back. It's going to put the most tension on your quad. And then the other cue is, as funny as it sounds, use your quad. I know it's a compound exercise that you can use a ton of glute or a ton of hamstring in, but really make an effort to, you know, really drive, you know, get as much knee flexion as possible, really drive almost from the ball of your foot, not drive through your heel because you will be able to use a lot more glute and hamstring from the ball, ball, ball of your heel. So, you know, just do everything you can to make it hard, you know, and that, that's everything, but especially this exercise, do everything you can to make it hard and don't cheat yourself and use what you're actually training. So, 
did that, and then from there uh, we did something that me and Brian have uh, we pioneered, you know, years ago, and that we use. Uh, we don't really use it a lot because at Legacy, I don't like the leg extension. So anytime we're at like a strange uh, gym that we're training legs at and have a leg extension, we'll typically finish this. But it's basically just kind of like a drop set ladder of death, basically. And essentially, you get in the leg extension, and your partner will pull the pin and move you down. You'll do five reps, and then you'll skip a hole. So you go down two of the plates, and you go until you can't perform five reps anymore, skipping a hole with the pin. And then you go down, back up, skipping two holes. You know, so you're going down two, and then you're going up every third. And uh, it basically ends up being just a brutal ass ladder that you go up and down, and you'll typically end up, you know, guys like Luke and I's size. We'll typically end up with like a 35 or a 40 rep set. Um, you can definitely scale it too, like if you're a girl or you know a, a, a lighter guy. Um, what you can do is instead of going every other one, you go every one on the way down and then every other one on the way up and you just don't go as far down. You don't chew up as much as the stack as quick and you can get your reps in without getting as heavy. Um, so it's definitely something anyone can do. And then honestly, after that, I uh, sat in an office chair and stared off into space for about 45 minutes because I was really jacked up from the workout. So um, it was a great one. Um, you know, it was uh, it was a uh, quintessential leg day. You know, it was everything that I love about bodybuilding, everything I love about leg day specifically. You know, it was two different compound exercises to brutal ass failure with a ton of weight. It was, you know, a couple different exercises that are just simply like mental gut checks, you know, to see how mentally tough you are. And then uh, most importantly, it was with some really good bodybuilders and friends. And, uh, you know, it's always, it's always good training with people I don't train with regularly that push me, you know, because it's one thing to train with someone, you know, just to say, oh, yeah, it was cool, I trained with him. But it's another thing for me to know, like, okay, I know how strong Luke is. I've seen him rip 700 pounds off the ground, you know, two days ago almost. And then, you know, Ben, Ben squats six plates all the time, you know, so like I, I better show up with my A game, you know, it's one of those things. So it has everything I love about a good leg day, everything I love about bodybuilding. So it was, it was, it was a great leg day. I'm definitely feeling it today. I've uh, started doing uh, 30 minutes of fasted on my off days just to keep my activity level high. Uh, and I definitely felt it on the stairs this morning, to say the least. So, um, yeah. All in all, like I said, it was uh, definitely the first workout back with the poundages really being pushed and really looking forward to pushing it day in and day out for the next six to eight weeks. Um, you know, like I've said before, I'm not trying to get in shape right now. I'm trying to add tissue. You know, I'm so lean, it doesn't matter if I pick up a little bit of body fat here and there, I'll get it off quickly. I don't need more than six weeks to get ready right now. So I'm really looking forward to showing the improvement I'm able to make in such a short time because I will be able to make an improvement. So. Looking forward to showing that hard work off. Looking forward to uh, making those making those strides.